show your support, like, share and subscribe. There you go. First podcast of 2019. Hello. Here already. All right. <laughs> Hello. Really doesn't seem like far ago when we were saying, right, we'll be back in a, a very long time. <laughs> yeah. I mean, what's it? Three before... weeks? Yeah, it must I be. Think. Yeah. Bef- before Christmas, at least, definitely. Well, yes, yes. <laughs> definitely. Yeah. Didn't Which really do a lot. Been and gone. Christmas wise, yeah. so, yeah. No. It's been and gone. Nearly two weeks into the new year already. Yeah, that was it, folks. Just... That was Christmas. Boom. <laughs> yeah, well, I hope you enjoyed it. Yeah. Now, let's get on with Valentine's Day and then Easter. Yeah. Easter eggs already in the shop, or at least, you know, mini eggs and things like that. Oh, God, yeah. And then it'll be Halloween and then it'll be Christmas again. Yay! Yeah, brilliant. <laughs> mm. And then 2020. Yes. <laughs> Roll on 2020, that's what I say. <laughs> yeah, now it's 2019 <laughs> rubbish. It's nearly two weeks yeah. old already. We're already sick of it. Let's have 2020. Yeah. Been there, done that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's enough. <laughs> oh, well. Oh, well, it's, I think we've gone back to normal. Normal service resumed, I should say, probably. Yeah. Has normal service been resumed with uh, your recording and editing and uploading, do you think? Yeah. Yeah, I'd I'd say so. I've um, it's well, it's Sunday now. I've actually uploaded two this following week, but at time of recording, uploaded one. But there's one scheduled for a Friday night. So it's, okay. <laughs> yeah, so it's the I'm gonna try and do at least one midweek, sort of around a Wednesday. Mhm. But if I've got two, do a Tuesday and a Thursday. Oh, okay. So it's yeah, I've sort of in my mind now got, um, say it'll be. A Wednesday video, then a Saturday video, then a Wednesday video, and then podcast Sunday. Oh, okay. And then Wednesday. And, Fair enough. Yeah, but if I've got a head, like I have actually done this week, I'll do a Tuesday and a Thursday, and then podcast Sunday. Oh, okay, just to kind of or, spread them out a bit. Yeah. Yeah. Or in this regard, Wednesday, Friday, because I actually, <laughs> even though I was ahead, I accidentally just didn't realise what day was what. So I was like, oh, <laughs> well, I'll go with it. <laughs> Yeah, I was kind of like that until this week, really. Not sure what day of the week it was, in fact, but I blame yeah. Christmas and New Year for that. Yes, so do I. <laughs> do you think you've um, caught up and got ahead or are on track? Um, I'm definitely not ahead, um, although okay. I do I do slash did have Saturday evening free, so I will slash have hopefully got a little bit ahead there um and okay. we'll kind of keep the a similar sort of schedule as as before christmas of weekly on a tuesday weekly on a saturday and then either a thursday or this podcast on a sunday depending on what things are doing um i've just okay. kind of changed slightly some of the things that i'm actually doing um right, at least that's enough. that's my intention at the moment um I, again as I said, kind of in my video at the beginning of the year and on the last podcast that we did, I'm kind of in a holding pattern until I move now. So I'll just yeah. sort of see how things go. And if I only do one or two videos, I'm not going to beat myself up about it. Um, no, that makes sense. And then when when we go 2.0 and the Twitch channel comes into effect, um, then there'll probably be less stuff on the YouTube channel as in terms of uh n- new stuff but hopefully yeah. i'll work out how to do twitch recordings and then put them on the channel after i've done them because i know yeah, that's it, the thing it should be simple yeah as i'm sure you've probably looked into and been influenced by it seems simple enough mm. from people that yeah people that have streamed before because mm. like um I've seen so many of the like the Pokemon ones, for example, where they do shiny hunting and they've got their reaction videos yeah. uploaded separately, and so it's like, oh, so you must be able to get your footage from that in some way. Yeah, I would think so. Yeah, I've I've certainly seen yeah. people that like I haven't watched them on Twitch, but I've seen their Twitch fit- footage on their YouTube channel. Yeah. Purely because it's yeah, been it's... done like over in America, and they did it while I was asleep, and I wasn't prepared to wake up and watch it. Because I'm not an yeah. idiot. 
<laughs> no. <laughs> I try and stick to British ones if possible, but not always the case. No, <laughs> of course. That sounds all right. Well, I'll I'll be watching on that one mm. when it comes into play. Yeah, I'm sure you'll be getting fans go from one to the other and vice versa as well. So it's well, hopefully. But I, I mean, if 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 they're separate, that's kind of why I'm structuring it the way they are. Some people only want certain things, don't they? So they can kind of focus on one thing and avoid the others. Yeah, it's just I suppose that's where the uh, where the switch will come into play as well on Twitch mainly. Switch on the Twitch, yeah. Yeah, yeah it, switch on Twitch. Switch on Twitch, yeah. It will be, it will yeah. be kind of newer stuff. Um, yeah, as I sort of said last year. So. Yeah, if that's not the name of a series, I don't know what is. What Switch on a... Twitch? What Switch? I call it Switch on Twitch, and I play PS4 games. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> that could do it. <laughs> yeah, I almost tried to record some PS4 footage the other day, but uh, the capture card wasn't. Um, registering the signal, so I've got to just uh, mm. have a little look into the technical side of that. It's not a problem with it, I don't think. No. no. People should be um, yeah, like subscribers if they're listening can be can know that um, I found a way to basically make the technical issues to an absolute minimum. They still happen every so often, hmm. but I've uh, I did three separate fifteen minute recordings of just the the Pokemon on the Switch like the title menu with the music going and yet um one of them i don't think it it skipped at all one of them only skipped once for one second and then the other one i think i got distracted whilst watching so i need to go through it again but it seems like i've updated the programming and uh i've changed the settings slightly and it seems like it's okay it seems like it's workable Mm. Okay, that's really weird, yeah, since we've so. got exactly the same capture card and I've never experienced any of these problems ever. Yeah, it is strange. I'm sure it is just a setting that I just need to check. But I'll, it's enough for me to record some stuff and then get onto the old um, Elgato support system when relevant. Mm. But yeah, at the moment it seems like I'm going to be doing a few more listy type things and get back to the gameplay in a few weeks, because I think... November and December was quite overloaded with gameplay videos, mainly because the game was released. So yes, <laughs> of course. Yeah, so I'm just calling that down for a moment. Fair I'm not, you know, not completely, but just you know, I'll just call it down. Mm. I actually recorded like a master trainer series, like where I did the Magic Art versus Magic Art. I recorded Caterpie versus Caterpie and that line. I've got the footage for that, but it skipped so often that it was very, Ow. very, <laughs> almost impossible to edit because it would make my talking out of sync with the footage so it's but yeah um the master trainer series will return <laughs> just people will have to bear in mind i'm now not only gyarados master trainer but butterfree master trainer just bear that in mind <laughs> but yeah it's um we'll get back to it eventually mm. fair enough yeah, yeah so um have you got any specific sort of gameplay areas you wanted to talk about or have you got other things up your sleeve for today um, I have something quite nice and new and positive and something that a lot of other okay. people have uh, shared their two pence on that I fancy chatting about. Um, oh, okay, then. That kind of that you don't really intriguing. need any in-depth knowledge on. Um, I've kind of oh, got a brief, <laughs> brief history. Um, but yeah, just a kind of a general chat about it, really. Um, okay. Was that uh, throwing oh, it over okay. to me to go first, then? <laughs> yeah, go for it. Yeah? Yeah, I'm intrigued now. <laughs> Okie dokie. Okie doke. I, yeah. I don't even know what ballpark it's in. This is interesting. Cool. <laughs> so, yes, what I want to talk about is a brand new um, promotion that got announced um, beginning of the year called All Elite Wrestling. Okay. Which a lot of people uh, have been talking about. Little quick history. Um, yeah. Back in May 2017, a fan on Twitter asked uh, Dave Meltzer, who is like one of the leading um, wrestling based journalists who's been going right. for like 20, 30 years, if they thought that um, Ring of Honor, which is a sort of fairly big promotion in America, not sort of WWE big, but probably the second or third biggest in 
North America, whether they would ever be able to sell out a 10,000 seat arena. Well, and okay. he replied immediately saying, not a chance. Um, just for some context, the last time that was done outside of a WWE organization in North America was way back when uh, WCW still existed um, in um, April of 2000. They managed oh, wow. okay. to sell, or they managed to fill an arena with 12,556 seats. However, only 8,377 of them were actually sold tickets. The others were all kind of press people and comps and uh, things like that. Yeah. So the, la the last time they actually managed to sell over 10,000 was in um, November in uh, 1999. Oh, right. They managed okay. to sell 12,119. So, just for some context, this hasn't been done for a while. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. 99 seemed a prime year for for wrestling, then, seen as your, uh, well, from your that was, WrestleGame that was, year two recently. <laughs> well, that was when it was kind of in its heyday, yes. That was yeah. kind of the, uh, the Monday Night Wars between uh, WWF, as it was at the time, and WCW. WCW were kind of starting to slow down a bit and kind of wane. They they did only last until March of 2001 before they folded. Um, and basically since then, in North America, WWE have had no competition really, not viable competition. Um, so yes, a fan asked Dave Meltzer, he said not a chance, and um, a wrestler by the name of Cody Rhodes basically took him up on that and um, said, I'll take that bet. And in September last year, put on with a couple of other people a show called All In, and they sold out a 10,000 plus seat arena in 29 minutes and 36 seconds. <laughs> Blimey. Yes. Okay. <laughs> and they have now announced that they have started their new uh, organization called All Elite Wrestling, basically. Um, okay. Yes. And they have managed to kind of get the uh, finances or the financial backing of uh, the Khan family, who currently own the Jacksonville Jaguars. Um, in obviously Jacksonville, Florida, and Fulham Football Club. Oh, right. <laughs> Those cans, and yeah, their net them. their net worth is six point six point four billion dollars. <laughs> the yeah. McMahon's, obviously, who own WWE, just for comparison, their net worth is, from what I could find anyway, and this is a slightly old older figure, is three point five billion. <laughs> So we kind of potentially have another Monday Night Wars on our hands, potentially, because um, oh, there was a massive kind of press rally this Tuesday um, with announcements of another show, which will be in um, May in Las Vegas, which will be in a, I think it, they said it was about a 17,000, 18,000-seater arena. So they're kind of going bigger, and they've called that double or nothing. <laughs> um, they've also trademarked um, a name for a show, uh, Tuesday Night Dynamite. So right. chances are they're going to try and do some kind of weekly um, show on a Tuesday evening to, again, compete. Um, apparently there are a few potential TV deals in the works at the moment but nothing's been confirmed but uh, really that's kind of the only thing they don't have at the moment because they've already managed to sign up about a dozen wrestlers and oh, right. they've and they've been going for um, a week and what's well two weeks two weeks <laughs> two weeks yeah <laughs> <laughs> and they've already managed to do all this. Well, they've been kind of known to the public, shall we say, for about two weeks. So, uh, rather, rather exciting times. 
And is that the, basically what the journalist guy was saying? This can't be done. And they've done uh, better. Yeah. <laughs> e- effectively, yeah. And it's all come off the back of a tweet from a fan to a wrestling journalist and yeah. somebody in the business seeing that and saying, I'll take you up on that bet. I think he did actually bet him $1. Oh, right. <laughs> to say, I can do that. And he did. Did he get that dollar? Uh, I I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think it was for a dot. It was something meaningless like that. It was basically for the 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 sake of saying I can do it. Yeah. Oh wow. Um, okay. <laughs> yeah, and they managed to do it. And sort of bearing in mind, obviously, those shows that I was talking about that WCW did those figures yeah. for, that was with an already established roster of people. It was with, when they had a TV deal, they were doing um, weekly shows on there to create kind of storylines and characters, and they were still only kind of getting those figures. Um, and this All In show was announced um, a fair few months in advance, but because they were just kind of bringing together um, anyone that they could get hold of to sign sort of a one deal contract for that show they weren't able to put in place any kind of meaningful storylines any kind of meaningful feuds which is kind of what ticket sales really revolves around and they still managed to sell out in less than half an hour (laughs) that's incredible yeah so quite what they're going to be able to do if they actually manage to get a TV deal or if they manage to kind of stream a show themselves maybe on their own kind of network yeah um where you kind of subscribe and i don't know pay to see a show on um on their own website whether they kind of want to go down that role instead of a a TV deal um i don't know but uh yeah Quite, uh, quite promising. <laughs> yeah, that sounds like they'd make a fortune if they could pull that off. Well, this is it. Well, they sort of already are pulling it off, but you know, it, it, in a more consistent manner. If that yes. Makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> that sounds incredible. And that and, well, I'm, and I'm, I'm, the thing that people have sort of said over the years as to why there's not been um, kind of any risk to the McMahons and WWE and because there's no competition is because people haven't got the money to invest in it yeah. and obviously here we've got an investor with sort of nearly twice as much money <laughs> that sounds insane <laughs> yes it is rather it's it's a lot of people are I think building it up a bit too quickly because as I said it's two weeks old and They've only done one show before they even really existed as a company. Um, But the people involved know how to market themselves very, very well. They know and understand what fans want to see. They understand how to market themselves on social media um, and kind of get that backing, hence why they were able to sell out their arena last time with kind of no tv deal no significant storylines anything like that they were just kind of able to create a lot of buzz about it throughout the year um and sell tickets (laughs) and i'm assuming you're going to be one of these uh punters who will be finding out how they can view at any opportunity i will certainly be keeping a close eye on it yes i mean i don't i don't tend to watch that much outside of the wwe bubble um mainly because a lot of it is quite difficult to see um or it's on quite expensive um internet mediums things like ring of honor aren't the easiest things to get hold of um a lot of these guys have been involved over in japan and they do have but obviously with it being japanese programming sometimes it can be a bit difficult to follow and i am aware that match quality tends to be a lot better but i think as i've said probably to yourself and i've certainly said over on my channel i'm a lot more interested in kind of the characters and the stories 
And when a lot of that is happening in Japanese, it can be quite difficult to, at least for me, to really get invested in. Yeah, you can get a hell of a lot more from uh, just to be invested into the story. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's, That's sort of why, even years ago, I never bothered kind of doing Japanese import gaming just to yeah. experience what the game was like because I wouldn't really be able to get the most out of it. I wouldn't be able to properly understand it. I didn't want to kind of sit there with translations from the internet while I'm trying to play something. It just kind of detracts from the experience. Yeah. And that's kind of the same reasoning, really. Um, but with this being a North American or predominantly USA uh, company, hopefully that won't be a problem. Hopefully not. No. <laughs> so yes, watch this space. That sounds fairly intriguing. I'll look mm. forward to sort of uh, what's the word? Content from your channel on that subject. Yes. Yes. Definitely. <laughs> any. Any. In any. Much detail. In indeed, as much detail as I can get hold of. Anyway, yeah. So, yeah, that was that kind of my. Good. Let's start the year on a positive. Well, they managed <laughs> to really do that and hit the ground running with it. <laughs> Oh, was that what in- I sh- oh God. What, sorry to interrupt. What I should say, one of the big names they've managed to sign is even a name you might recognise from way back in those 99, 2000 days. Oh, um, yeah. One Chris Jericho. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I yes. know of the name. Yes. Not just from your recent video. I I, I know of the name, yeah. Mm. <laughs> so, yes. Oh, OK. That he well, that managed- sounds interesting. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. Is he still doing all of his moves and... T- uh, <laughs> yes. He, considering his age, he can still put on a pretty damn good show. Um, <laughs> oh, and okay. has managed to kind of reinvent his character as the years have gone on um, and remain relevant to a current audience. He certainly isn't trying to be the person he was in the year 2000, but he is still very good at what he does. <laughs> oh, okay then. Yes. That sounds <laughs> intriguing. <laughs> yes. Well, watch this space then, people. Indeed. <laughs> that will be here soon. <laughs> that will be here soon. Okay then, mm. cool. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's a sort of like a, a vague contrast of what I was going to to bring to the table today, if that makes okay. sense. Whereas I was... <laughs> yeah, from... Wrestling to Pokemon, as our chats usually go from. <laughs> yeah, they do tend to. <laughs> yeah, they do tend to, unless something happens. Of course, yes. But not much has happened lately. It's uh, all quiet on that front, although 2019 is the year of Generation 8 in Pokemon, so that's going to be just... Oh, interesting. <laughs> is that going to be on the Switch? Yeah, that will be. Cool. It, yeah, what they did for the last generation was um, what about once a week or so they re- released a sort of one two minute video of a couple of the new Pokemon, and then a week later release another one. Oh, okay. They'd never tell you when they were going to do one, but it tended to be around a Tuesday, sort of right three o'clock ish. But uh, yeah, I'm hoping they do the same for this year because then I can just get home and just tell everyone immediately, fresh off the press, what I think of what they're releasing. Cool. But anyway, yeah, that was just a side plan. <laughs> <laughs> Seeing as um, you now have a Switch and the Let's Go game is widely available to you. <laughs> it, it, it is, although I've not found a copy of it yet anywhere that I've oh, been. Really? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it, 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 that must be a um, testament to its popularity. Uh, I would hope so. Yeah. Because I certainly <laughs> do want exist. a copy of it. Yeah, they do exist. <laughs> it will have new. It will have new types and new new types and new moves in there, but ninety percent of it is basically what you should recognise just in ten eighty p graphics. So cool, lovely. <laughs> but yeah, so it, I, what I've done was um, for today, I've looked at ten Pokedex entries from Generation One Pokemon. Okay. And I was just going to see if you could guess some of them. To be fair, I'm going to say a good seven or so should be fairly achievable. Right. There are vi- there are degrees of difficulty, but some of them are quite straightforward. Okay. So for yeah, so for example, if just an example, if I was to say to you, this Pokemon has electricity storing pouches on its cheeks. These appear to become electrically charged during the night while it sleeps. It occasionally discharges electricity when it is dozy after waking up. What would the, uh, what would that one be? 
Uh, I think the electricity storing pouches on its cheeks are probably its the biggest cheeks, giveaway. Well, it's it's <laughs> either a Pikachu or a Raichu, I would say, for that. Yeah, it's yeah, it's a Pikachu that one. <laughs> right. Okay. So that's that's the example. Cool. Now, yeah. So um, I'll just go through see how your knowledge has fared over the years. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, we'll see how it goes. So, um, okay. yeah, oh, well, nowhere else to start, really, apart from the first one, number one, which reads... Oh, these are all from varied games as well. I just tried to find the most sort of... What's, what's, not challenging, but, like, quiz-worthy. So it has clues in there. Oh, OK, so they might be from, like, um, Sun and Moon, but they're still Generation 1 Pokemon. Yeah, Right, okay. It, yeah, they're just the one I thought could provide the most clues. Or Right, yeah. cool, okay. So, the fir- yeah, the first one being, it flies around the sky in search of powerful opponents. It breathes fire of such great heat that it melts anything. Charizard, surely, yeah. That is, that is a Charizard, yeah. Cool. One for one. See, I've tried to... There were loads about it breathing fire, but there was only really one that was on about flying. So I was like, right, there you go. That's that's good. Oh, okay, yeah, because then it could have been... Yeah, any number yeah. of things, potentially. Cool, okay. Any number of things. I get the idea now. <laughs> yeah, so that's one for one. That's not bad. I've tried to oh, make the first few record. fairly. Yeah, see, there you go. We'll stop now. Can I quit we? now? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and no, I've tried to make the first few... The most simpler ones, but to be fair, there's quite a fit. This is 10 out of 10s achievable, anyway. Okay, um, <laughs> the second one, there you go. Number two, its large body is over 26 feet long. Can you think of any yet? I have got another sentence. <laughs> I've got one that's immediately come into my head, but I'm not going to say it yet if you've got more to say. <laughs> Okay. Um, despite its size, it can squirm its way through the ground at fifty miles per hour. Onyx. That is onyx. Yes. See, okay. There's not many that are twenty-six feet long, so that's a. <laughs> no, I thought it might be that or a Snorlax. Yeah. Sad but when not. you said about going <laughs> through the ground, I was like, oh, well, "It's not that, then, is it?" <laughs> yeah. Essentially, a essentially a ground snake. <laughs> Yes. There you go. Number three. This should be fairly simple as well. A vicious psychic Pokemon created by genetic engineering. Its cold, glowing eyes strike fear into its enemy. Genetic engineering? Yeah. A vicious vicious... psychic Pokemon created by genetic engineering. Uh... Uh... Kadabra? <laughs> no, it's not. This is a, that's uh. Mewtwo. <laughs> oh, of course it is. Uh. It's uh, yeah, I forgot it that was... that was a psychic type. Yeah, see, that's a clone from Mew, apparently. Yes, yeah, it is. Uh. There's lots of uh, there's lots of yeah. I'm not going to spoil anything, but there's lots of stuff. There's there's a fair amount of stuff on that in the game. Anyway. <laughs> ah. All right. Yeah. Moving on to number four. It can fly. Oh, this is a good one actually. It can fly in spite of its big and bulky physique. It circles the globe in just sixteen hours. Big and bulky physique. Yeah. Uh. I enjoyed this one. Reading. All I can all I can think of are birds like <laughs> Spiro and Fero and and yeah. Pijoto and uh. It's got arms and legs, if that's a good enough clue. Yeah, well, I was thinking it probably isn't a bird if it's if it's sort of rounded. The only other thing I can think of that can fly, obviously other than a Charizard, is maybe Dragonite. Okay, is that your answer? Yeah. Yeah, that's correct. Is it? Ah, cool. Yeah, it is. I didn't think they <laughs> were particularly bulky, though. No, but, uh, well, depends really, I suppose. <laughs> I think that did come from a Generation 1 game as well, that, that entry. Hmm. Yeah. But yeah, right, number five. Cool. Its stomach's digestive juices can dissolve any kind of poison. It can even eat things off the ground. <sighs> one would hope this one's simple as well. <laughs> it 
can you its stomach can what its stomach's digestive juices can dissolve any kind of poison it can even eat things off the ground the only thing I can think of and I don't know why this has popped into my head maybe because of the poison aspect is a victory bell uh, I thought that's what you may say but that's the wrong answer ah it's uh, it's Snorlax actually oh because mm. hey, so it does literally just eat control. everything yeah yeah, <laughs> ah. yeah it's, it was a good one I liked that one yeah very good but, yeah. right Damn this it! Is a, this is a, <laughs> this is a fun one. I like this one. It seductively. Hang on, I've got to say that again. It seductively wiggles its hips as it walks. It can cause people to dance in unison with it. I like this. Oh, oh, oh! Is that a jinx? That is a jinx. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I saw that Pokedex entry and I was like, "Yep, that's that's the one. That's going in." <laughs> I think that's mainly coming to my head from watching the really old cartoons. Yeah. When it had a black face and it was <laughs> yes in, in much uh, much controversy. <laughs> Back before they made it racially acceptable. Yeah, made it purple. <laughs> <laughs> yes. There's actually a Christmas episode where they meet Santa and he's got a black jinx. Okay. Don't, yeah, they don't show it anymore, funnily so, enough. <laughs> n- no. <laughs> Anyway, yeah, number seven, so that's four for six. That's not bad, actually. Okay, so if I can get sort of three quarters... Yeah, if you can get seven or eight, that's pretty good. Okay. But yeah, uh, number seven. Forms colonies in perpetually dark places. Uses ultrasonic waves to identify and approach targets. Now, I don't know about the ultra waves thing, because that's leading me somewhere else. Right, okay. Oh, colonies. Oh, no, I suppose it probably could be. <laughs> Ooh. Can you... Sorry, can you read it one more time, please? I can, Because I'm yeah. torn between two things now. <laughs> That's right. Forms colonies in perpetually dark places. Uses ultrasonic waves to identify and approach targets. Right. There are because many of the ultras. Because of the ultrasonic thing, I'm steering away from my initial thought, and okay. I'm going to say um, a Zubat. That is a Zubat, yeah. Ah. <laughs> what at was your first, initial thought? thought it was, well, at first I thought it was a Doug Trio. Oh, OK. Yeah, I don't because know. of the dark and the colonies, but as soon as you said ultra waves, I was like, well, it's definitely not anything to do with that. Yeah, no, that makes sense. OK, I'll give you that one. Yeah. Okay, well, cool. we'll move on. What's that? Five from seven. We'll move on to number eight then. They, yeah, okay. This could be. Oh, this is interesting. <laughs> <laughs> um, the three. <laughs> yeah, the three heads express joy, sorrow, and anger as they plan strategy together. When it sleeps, one head remains awake. Three heads. Yeah, there's actually at least four Pokemon in Generation One that have three or more heads. I'll read it again. The three heads that express joy, sorrow and anger as they plan strategy together. When it sleeps, one head remains awake. Mm. I wonder if that is a dog trio. Is that your answer? I've got another thing in mind, but I don't (laughs) think it's got three heads. Okay. What's your other thing in mind? My other thing in mind is a wheezing, but oh, I'm pretty okay. sure there's three connective things, but there are only two of them are heads. Yeah. So I'm not okay. going to say that. And I can't think of anything else with multiple heads. <laughs> are you going for, uh, what was it you said, Dugtrio? So I'm going to have to go for Dugtrio, because it's the only thing I can think of. Yeah, it's actually Dodrio. They've only got two heads. That's a Doduo. <laughs> oh! Uh. This is a Dodrio, yes. yeah. That's what I was saying. It could be it. like there are. There's Dodrio, Magneton, yeah. Dugtrio, and Exeggutor. Oh, of course, Magneton. Yes. <laughs> yeah, they've all got multiple heads. That's why I thought that could be a good one, actually. <laughs> yes. Didn't even think about Magneton. Yeah. yeah. Four Generation One Pokemon with three or more heads. I don't think there's been many after thinking about it. Well, am got... I 
Am I right about the wheezing thing? That's yeah. not got three heads, has it? No, that's just got two. <laughs> just two. <laughs> just two, but it's also got a third weird connective thing. Yeah. Yeah. I think I think it's based off of like a um like a tumour. Oh nice. Yeah, it's it's, it's horrible when you read into its origin. <laughs> yeah. Hence why it's a poison. It doesn't look type, a very happy it? thing. No. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, anyway, yeah, okay, number nine then. Five for eight, number nine. We can get there. Oh. Uh, on every... Still get seven then, maybe. Yeah, <laughs> you can do. On every night of a full moon, they come out to play. When dawn arrives, they go to sleep, nestled up against each other in a deep, quiet mountain. There's a few oh. clues in there. On every night of a full moon, they come out to play. When dawn arrives, they go to sleep, nestled up against each other in a deep and quiet mountain. See, the full moon thing says I'm kind of leaning towards a werewolfy thing, but I can't think of any wolf type in Generation 1 at all. I can think of foxes, but I can't see why they would have anything to do with a full moon. Yeah. Or mountains. <laughs> and I can't think of anything else mountain wise other than well, rock type stuff that yeah. I don't think is it. Um... <laughs> I think the key word in all of it is moon. I think that's the key word. Yeah. <laughs> I I couldn't even hazard a guess. <laughs> Do you want me just to say? Yeah, that, put me out of my misery. That is a Clefairy. Oh. Because they're from Mount Moon. Every night, yeah. on every night of a full moon, they come out to play. Yeah. So. I was just thinking that I was expecting their entry to say something about singing. Oh, right, yeah. <laughs> Some others yeah. might do. I can't remember now. Yeah. Damn it. But, well, oh, okay. One, yeah. That's right. There's one more. Right. This could. This is. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm just going to go for it. <laughs> so this is to get more than half. This is to get more than half. Right. But half is still good, I suppose. Yeah. Number ten. Here you go. It is inept at turning because of its four short legs. It can only charge and run in one direction. Four short legs. Yeah. Charge and run. Oh. No. <laughs> four short legs. I can't think of anything with only four short legs. <laughs> Charge and run. Uh. No, the only things I can think of are like a Bulbasaur, but they haven't got like particularly bad turning circle, and surely their thing wouldn't say anything <laughs> to do with charging and running. Would be to do with like leaves and vines and stuff. Uh... You're getting stumped by a Bulbasaur's axis. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can't not answer again. Uh... <laughs> oh, I honestly can't think of anything that's got really stumpy yeah. legs that would have that much of a problem. Of... Trying to think of a clue. <laughs> I can't actually think of a clue. No. It's it's a uh, it's a rock and ground type. There you go. No. I don't know if I... it's going to help you, but it's it's evolution is the first Pokemon ever created. Actually. I wouldn't know what that is. Fair enough. <laughs> no. Right, shall I say? Yeah, you'll have to put me out of my misery again. It's a Rhyhorn. Oh. And Rhydon was the first Pokemon ever designed and created. Was it? Yeah. Oh. That's why all the statues in red, blue and yellow are um, look like Rhydons, because they made all the statues to be the first one ever made. Oh, OK, to kind of symbolise yeah. this is where it started, at least in our kind of brain. Yeah, pretty much. Oh, <laughs> OK. I suppose yeah. that makes sense with the whole charging thing and... Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, but that wasn't too bad. Surely it's based on a rhino, right? Yeah. They can turn. 
<laughs> Rhinos can turn. Yeah. <laughs> I assume. I'll be honest, I haven't really looked into that. but <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty sure I must have seen them on some kind of documentary turning at some point. Yeah. <laughs> oh. oh well, I got I half. So. Oh, that's all right. Yeah, I got, you got half. half. That's all right. That's uh, not too bad. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Hopefully, put you in the mood to go out and find. Let's go now. So that'd be good. <laughs> yeah. Well, I've I've been looking for it anyway. I will be. Uh, yeah. I I will be making sure that my Zelda machine um, evolves into a Zelda and Pokemon machine. So. Yeah. That will be a thing. Yeah, it should be good. Yeah, it's it. I'm not going to sit here and try and make you buy it but no I, i'd recommend no i do i do want to that that's basically the intention for me with the switch is to get all the kind of exclusive games that pique my interest um yeah. i won't be kind of going out and getting triple a type games on it because obviously i've got a ps4 for that which will play them better but yeah yeah that no, should be fun then mm. yes okay well be. that's a uh, yeah that was all from my section anyway that's all right Okay, Five okay. out of ten. Yeah. You could be proud of that. <laughs> I'll take that. I'll take that. <laughs> yeah, I'll try and think of something informative for uh, next fortnight, next episode. Yeah, I've got no idea. I'll probably do what I normally do and think of something that day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, oh, we've, we've never done that. Don't be silly. We, we don't do that every no, time. We're, <laughs> we're always really, really prepared and, yeah, yeah. come well equipped with... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll try and think of something non Pokemon next time as well. <laughs> okay, fair days. Try and think. Okay. I'll try and think of something else. Yes, well, Possibly, I think we'll I'm, <laughs> I'm going to be kind of probably more gaming related next time anyway, just so that there's a bit more of a conversation rather than me talking at you for however yeah. long. Oh, no. <laughs> That's alright, I don't mind. <laughs> <laughs> Oh well, yeah. I'm gonna go put my uh, put my dinner on now then. Okie dokie, and yes, I suppose I better eat as well. Yeah. Till next time. <laughs> yeah. Until next time, I shall see you later. Ta ta. <laughs> <laughs>